Hi there. All right. So in this video, we're going to talk about a few things um, and I'm going to show you how I created a custom scanner in Sierra chart and how you could use this to basically scan for almost anything. Um, and in this video, I'm going to show you how I created a scanner that scans for market correlations. And um, that's the example I'm going to be using. But you'll be able to see that once you learn how to use the associated watch list for a chart, you should be able to create a scanner to scan for just about anything that you can think of. Um, and uh, you would definitely have to test it out. It definitely takes some time to work through the, these types of things to get them to work properly. But um, that's it. I'll just demonstrate the scan for you first. Now, this is just a plain vanilla chart. But the thing about this chart is that it has an associated watch list of about 150 symbols. So now when I go to chart and then scan, what it does is it runs through every single symbol one by one and um, if I have an alert condition that's set what's gonna happen is every time the alert is true it will pop up on what is called the alert manager and uh, it will bring them up here it will populate the alert manager every time one of my alert conditions is true so for example here this is the formula that I have it's basically SG1 or subgraph 1 is greater than or equal to 0 0.90 when it's true it will pop it up or populate it onto the alert manager right here okay so you can see right here I just ran this scan right now at uh, 1157 uh, and something here so you can see that starting from right here all these symbols popped up on the scanner well, so that's the scan that I'm running it's a correlation coefficient so what this tells me is that all of these markets starting from this symbol right here, which is the S&P futures, all of these symbols starting from that one all the way up until here have a 90% or greater correlation to the symbol I have selected. Okay. And that's basically what I do to scan for market correlations and uh, a quick way of seeing how strong market correlations are right now. And um, if I need to be looking at any particular symbols next to the market I'm trading, because at times there are certain days where market correlations are not very obvious, they're not very strong. And uh, sometimes you need to put other stocks on your screen to kind of give yourself a better idea of um, what's going on in the market. OK, so that's why I created the scanner. So that's it. And, you know, this could be used for a variety of purposes. For example, let's say you're trading a certain stock and you want to simply make a scan to scan the entire stock market or scan you know stocks that are active to see which ones have strong correlation to the stock you're trading and you might scan over different asset classes like crude oil you know bonds or stock market indices or whatever and uh, that will give you a better idea at times you know and i've seen this happen a lot of times where certain stocks are starting to correlate with other asset classes like crude oil or crypto or, or anything so you know, it might be important for those traders who are trading those stocks to, you know, keep an eye on these asset classes. And this is one way that you can scan through many assets to see what's correlating to your market. Okay, so now that I've explained to you the scanner, I'll show you how I did it. It's not very complicated. So the first thing you need to do is you need to go into the chart and then the associated watch list. And this is where you put all of the symbols for your scan. So when I run the scan on this chart, it's going to scan through every single one of these symbols. And every time an alert condition is true, it'll populate it in the alert manager. So you can add symbols into this watch list manually by simply clicking add and then typing in the symbol. You can also import a text document um, and that's pretty easy as well. So you can type them all into a text document and then import that. And uh, there's a way of doing that. Just refer to the CR chart documentation on how to do that but um, it's through a text document it's very easy so once you have all your symbols in your associated watch list um, after that you simply need to fix up your alert condition so that when you run the scan it um, alerts for the right thing that you want it, want it to alert for um, so i created a, an alert condition that alerts whenever my correlation coefficient indicator is uh, 90 percent or higher so basically 0 0.90 or higher in this case it's 100 because the correlation is on the same market <laughs> for the correlation coefficient indicator in order for it to work there's two inputs and basically the two inputs are normally set to two different markets and probably you can set them to other things like indicators too but the point of it is to basically determine what is the correlation between two markets 
and um, I'll just show you that indicator. So you go to analysis then studies or just press F6 on your keyboard. And you can also see that I have an additional symbol added to the chart. Okay, that's gonna be important because remember your correlation coefficient indicator needs two inputs. One of the inputs will be set to your main price graph. In this case, input two is set to the main price graph. And then your input one needs to be set to the symbol that you want to test the correlation against. So what you do is you add an additional symbol to the chart and you set it to that symbol. In this case, I have it set to the NASDAQ futures, but you can set it to whatever stock you're trading or whatever market you want to test correlation against. And uh, then you put that as one of your inputs in your uh, correlation coefficient and the other input set it to the main price graph because the main price graph is going to be the one that's uh, switching through all the other symbols and getting the correlation number. And um, that's pretty much it. So I have that set to the last traded price for both of them. And the length of the study is uh, basically the look back is over the last 21 bars. Now I find this to be a perfectly fine number. If you need to change the time frame of that, you could, well, you could change the number if you want, but what I prefer to do is simply change the time frame of the chart. So basically if it's set to a 15 minute chart, it's gonna be um, the, checking the correlation coefficient over the last 21 bars on the 15 minute chart. Then if I switch it to you know a one minute chart, then it'll be checking correlation over the last 21 bars on a one minute chart. So you can see how you can easily switch that time frame around, okay? And um, that's pretty much it. So once you have the correlation coefficient uh, configured properly, at that point, all you need to do is set the alert condition. So you go into the study itself. I believe this can be done on the main price graph as well. But for this purpose, because it's a very simple alert condition, I simply put it in the study itself. So you go into your study correlation coefficient, go to the alerts, and that's the alert condition I set. So study subgraph one greater than or equal to 0 0.90. And uh, study subgraph one is basically the correlation coefficient in this case. So whenever it displays a value of 0 0.90 or greater, it will um, trigger the alert. The alert is true and it will pop up on the alert manager and uh, that's it, that's how it works. Now, just a few extras here. Um, when you have an associated watch list for the chart, you can use the plus and minus keys to cycle through symbols in your associated watch list. So that's always pretty handy. If you have a certain chart and you just wanna get an idea of where things are. Um, the other thing is before you run a scan, this is what you need to do at all times, especially if you're scanning over a large amount of symbols. Um, you go to your chart, then you go to edit, then you go to download data for associated watch list symbols. You cannot forget this step or else your scan is gonna run really slow. So it's gonna ask you confirm download of historical intraday data for non-updating symbols in the associated watch list. You select yes and when you click yes here, you're gonna see on your Sierra chart um, control bar, you're gonna see DL appear here at the top and then you're gonna see the number it starts from is the number of symbols that you have in your associated watch list. So normally for me, it starts around 150 and then it slowly starts to work its way down and it normally takes about 30 seconds to download the most recent data for all of those charts, um, which is really not a long time. now. So once you have the most recent data for all of those symbols in your associated watch list, you simply go to chart and you start to scan. And then the scan should perform very quickly. And um, that's about it. And then you just look at your alert manager to see what's popping up. And uh, there you have it guys, you know. And obviously this could be done to configure, you know, much more complicated types of scans than I did right here, but I just use this scanner to um, see how strong the correlations in the market are, or if I need to kind of um, give myself a better um, market to display next to the market I'm trading um, so I can reference a correlation a little bit better. So I hope this helped anybody out there and um, that's it. I'll take care, bye.